Welcome to another episode of The Adventures of Kit Carson. You know, in the 1940s and the 1950s, the movie studios were scared to death of television. And they had good cause to be. Uh, you didn't see movies on television back in the 1940s and the 1950s. Not in the early 50s, anyway. But one man, Bill Boyd, had the foresight to sell almost everything he owned to buy the rights to his Hopalon Cassidy movies. And when he found out that you could run film through a movie camera, he started leasing those movies to different television stations. And overnight, he became a hero. Because for the first time, there was something fantastic to watch on TV. And that fantastic thing was a Western. And after that, many other people followed suit with making westerns, especially for television, including Bill Boyd. He made some Hopalong Cassidy features just for television, a 30-minute show. Kit Carson was one of the early westerns, starting in 51. So sit back and relax and enjoy another episode of The Adventures of Kit Carson, starring Bill Williams and Don Diamond, brought to you by Wild West Toys, Toy Gun Town website. She's trying to get more speed out of that pony. the other way. What do you reckon they are? What difference does it make? We'll let them lose themselves and we'll take after the girl. Yeah, she's miles down the road by now. We'll get her before sundown. That pony can't run forever. Drop your guns. Get their guns, Taro. I ain't carrying anything but a little bag of gold dust. If you want it that bad, go ahead and take it. It's in my side pocket here. Kid, they think we're bandits. Who was that little girl you were chasing? Well, that was Chrissy Hall. She was running away from home. Do you always shoot at runaway girls? 
Now listen, mister. We weren't shooting at that little girl. Of course we wasn't. We were just shooting up in the air trying to scare her. So she'd stop. What do you think we are, anyway? I don't know. We're friends of Chrissy's folks. Yeah, you know, just a couple of miners from Melody Flats. Well, you better be getting back to Melody Flats. Pick up your guns. Where are you going, Chrissy? To Sacramento. That's a big journey for a little muchacha. It's 150 miles to Sacramento. Mighty big ride for that little pony. Why are you going there? I must see the governor. Oh, we better go back to Melody Flats and have a little talk about this. Chrissy, where have you been? Well, I'm much obliged to you for bringing her home. Will you go get yourself cleaned up? It's most supper time now. Where did you find her? Four miles down the trail. She was on her way to Sacramento to see the governor. <laughs> that child will be the death of me. She's always been more like a boy than a girl, gallivanting around the country on that pony. She rides like a real cavallero. Did you give her the pony? Oh, mercy, no. Girl her age ought to be learning to cook and sew. Her pa gave it to her. My sister was her ma. She died soon after Chrissy was born, and she was raised by her pa. Raised just like a boy. Where's her father now? Oh, he went off up the Feather River country looking for gold. He's a good enough man set when it comes to raising a girl. Well, set yourselves down. You'll stay for supper, won't you? You have frijoles, see? Uh, it's very kind of you, ma'am, but we have another call to make. Oh. Well, it seems like I ought to know your names after what you did for Chrissy. My name's Kit Carson. This is my very good friend, El Toro. <laughs> I'm right honored to know you. Gracias. El placer es para nosotros. Did you send two men to look for Chrissy? Well, yes. Yes, I did. I sent Dave McGaw and Jim Dagger to find her. They told me you had a little misunderstanding on the trail. You boys treat them pretty rough, I reckon. They shot at Chrissy. Oh, never believed that. They might have tried to scare her, but they'd never hurt her. They're good friends of her pa. You're not going to punish Chrissy, are you? Well, land sakes, no. She's a good girl. Only she gets crazy notions sometimes. Like she lives in a make-believe world. Well, you tell her we'll be in to see her before we leave town. <laughs> are you uh, aiming to stay long in Melody Flat? No, ma'am, we're not. Well, I'll just put a pot of beans on the stove right now. You can come get them any time. Me resulta muy amable. Bye, ma'am. Goodbye. Chrissy, come here this minute. Now, you go get Dave McGaw and Jim Dagger right now. Go on, go out the back door. Somebody's been digging under the school. Yes, I guess Chrissy knew what she was talking about. Uh, Chrissy sent us. Chrissy sent you, I guess it's all right. Come on in. Is that what you use for a pointer? School's closed temporarily. Well, I'm Mercy McBride. Now, who are you? Why did Chrissy send you? My name is Kit Carson. This is my good friend, El Toro. When we met Chrissy, she was on her way to Sacramento to see the governor. Guess she got that idea from me. I was going to go, but I was afraid to leave here. 
You see, anywhere else, possession's nine points of the law. This town, it's the whole ten points. We took her back to see her aunt. Oh, that was good. Poor child might have died of hunger and exposure. The story she told us sounded like a muchacha's dream up, but we saw the diggings outside the school. Nobody better touch that gold. Oh, it isn't for me. It's, it's for the children and their children. Who's trying to take it away from you? Ty Bixon. He owns the miner's supply store here. There are others, of course, but, uh, but he's the leader. Tell me, who discovered that there was gold under the school? Chrissy did. She discovered it at recess, and she brought in a nugget as big as your hand. It was almost pure gold. Did she know what it was? Well, of course she did. She'd been brought up playing right next to her paw at his diggings. And you know, when she handed it to me, she said it was for the school. It wasn't for me, and it wasn't for her, but for the school. Who owns the school? Well, I do, but I decided right then that the gold was going to go to build up a fine new one. I told the children about my dream, and they went home and told their parents. Parents said I was crazy and ought to be locked up. When she told us about it, we couldn't believe her. Who started the diggings on the side of the building? Well, I, I went to file a claim to make everything legal. By the time I got back, the men were already digging. You think she's loco, see? What's crazy about wanting to do something for the children of the country? Just a little nervous, I guess. I, I've been waiting up day and night watching for the claim jumpers. Well, El Toro and I will come back tonight and take over for you while you get some sleep. In the meantime, I'd like to talk to this Ty Bixon. Come on, Toro. All those claims on Danger Hill, including title to schoolhouse property, are questionable. If we get rid of the school, Mom, give it up into a lot of claims, there's nobody going to be able to take it away from us. Yeah, it sounds mighty good, Ty. But what are we going to do about Carson? He knows about it now. This doesn't concern anybody, except us here in Melody Flats. If Carson sticks his nose in, I'll twist it for him. We tried to play it square with that school, Mama. Didn't we offer to build her another schoolhouse? Yeah, we tried to make her a partner, but she wants it all. And not for herself, but for a lot of kids that ain't even born yet. You're the justice of peace, Ty. Why don't you call her insane and lock her up? Here's Carson now. You boys get outside. Dixon, I hear you having trouble with the school teacher. This trouble you talk of is none of your business, stranger. But since you've asked, I'll tell you about it. When the diggings around Melody Flats died out, most of the miners left, but a few of us stuck around. Now we found gold on the hill near the schoolhouse. That crazy school mom drives all the men away with a rifle. Does she own the property? I run this town. And I say that property belongs to everybody. Now you take my advice and get out of here while you're still healthy. None of this is any of your business. I'm going to make it my business. Looks like we're not welcome. We better get out of here. Just as you say, Kick.
to head you back in the direction of the school. That gives me an idea, Ty. Let's hear it. We'll go up there in the middle of the night with some brush and burn the schoolhouse down. That's not a bad idea. Then we can pick the three of them off when they start out. Uh, if we set fire to the schoolhouse, we'll burn up the whole town. I have a better way to do it. Sorry, supper wasn't any better. What's wrong with beans? I've had so many, I won't be able to look a bean in the eye for months. <laughs> well, I've been practically a prisoner here so long that my food's run out. Uh, how far is it to the well? Oh, not far, just up the top of the hill. We better not light the lamp. Make us too good a target. Guess they think they have us trapped in here. Well, I walked all the way around the house. There's nobody out there now. I guess Chrissy had the right idea about seeing the governor. You mean we should not have taken her home? I mean, someone has to go and see the governor. And I guess it's going to have to be you, Mercy. El Toro and I will stay here and protect the school while you're gone. What'll I ask him? Ask the governor to give you a state charter for the school. With that in your hand, no one will ever bother you again. A state charter is something that even Bixen will respect. Might be a month before I get in to see him. Yes, you will. I'll give you a letter to him. That'll get you back here very quickly. Then I'll go. Good. And there's something else. I want you to take Christy along with you. Uh, she can plead your case better than anyone. You're right there. But will her aunt let her go? We'll take care of that. Nothing but you since I left here. When do you want this? I'll wait. Oh, will you indeed? Well, come on over and eat some frioli. I knew you'd be back, so I made a big pot full just for you. Chrissy. Chrissy! Call her again. She's bound to hear you. You don't know how children sleep. Chrissy! Now, you just make yourself comfortable. I'm gonna get your beans. Oh, uh, please don't trouble. Only sit down here and talk. There's no trouble at all. I've got a pot full right here on the stove. Chrissy! 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 What did you say? Oh, I was admiring you out loud. I thought you called Chrissy. Uh, uh, I was talking about your eyes. I, I said they're Crispy, you know, crispy blue, like the snow on a mountain peak under the bright winter sun. Oh, you talk the prettiest thing. Why don't American men talk like you do? Hmm. American men talk with the mouth. I talk with the heart. Oh, come on, Helmio, sit down beside me and talk. There's much to tell you of your loveliness. No, no, you have to eat first. I know what's good for a man. Mr. Carson wants you to go and tell the governor all about our school, dear. And I'm to go with you. Can you saddle my pony for me, please? Oh, no, dear. We're going by stagecoach from Morgantown. Dress quickly and don't make a sound. And put on lots of warm clothes. Say some more pretty things, El Toro. Con todo el corazón. Oh, that sounds real nice. What does it mean? It means with all my heart. You know, I'm enchanted about everything concerning you except your name. Well, what's wrong with my name? Well, it lacks the poetry that I see in your soul. It's not worthy of your beauty. From now on, I shall call you only Gail. Do you like that? That's cute. Just Gail. Then may I have some more coffee, Gail? In here. Is there anything wrong? Not yet. Where's Chrissy? In bed, of course. You better look and find out. Oh, 
I put it there an hour ago myself. Are you going with us? Just a little way. Don't talk, dear. Better keep her inside tomorrow. She might get hurt if she goes visiting the school, Mom. I'll watch her. Remember, you've got a part in this, too. You won't have to be washing any more minor shirts when we cash in. See you later. Good night. You have to leave right now. Well, Niña de los ojos azules, why? Well, I guess you can stay a few more minutes. I'll leave you here. When you get to town, put the horse in the stable, and I'll pick him up later. I wonder if Chrissy's aunt's missed her yet. I wonder. Look. <laughs> Never knew a man to learn so fast. Chrissy, she hasn't made a sound for hours. Oh, wait. I, I have something to tell you. Tengo vergüenza. Well, what does that mean? I'm a bashful man, and it's hard for me to tell you how much I love you. Please, sit down while I tell you all that is in my heart. On my knee. <laughs> oh, I'd better look at Chrissy first. Uh, please. At this moment, my heart is bursting with romance. At a time like this, you should forget the child, forget the laundry, forget everything. Oh, well, Tarol. Come and sit down on the couch and talk to me. Just sit down. There. Now lean back and be comfy, darling. Think of all the pretty things you were going to tell me. Well, dear, we've nothing more to worry about until we see the governor. Up you go. Mm. You ran Abigail. I'm going to Sacramento with Miss McBride. We're going to take the stage at Morgantown. I'm sorry, but I have to do what's right. Sign Chrissy. Tora, wake up. Romeo, put your ears to my lips while I whisper of my love. Come on, Romeo, the romance is over. Kate? Where am I? Now I remember she said she was going to look after Chrissy. How long ago was that? I don't know. What time is it now? Five o'clock. Morning or afternoon? Morning, of course. What was the time you last remember? I'm sorry, Kate. Oh, it's not your fault. I should have told Chrissy not to leave any messages. Where is everybody? I don't know what happened to your girlfriend, but everybody else is looking for Mercy and Chrissy. If you feel all right, come on along with me. I'm ready for anything.
That stagecoach holdup is going to hang you, Bixom. Get on your horse. What are we going to tell Chrissy about her aunt? The truth, that her aunt has disappeared. Maybe I could find her. Uh -uh, don't do that. Mercy will take care of Chrissy from here on in. Well, the school is now a chartered state institution, and we're going to build a dormitory for homeless children. And the mine's been set up in such a way that the school can go on forever. We owe it all to you and El Toro. <laughs> and what about Chrissy? She's the one who discovered the gold. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for The Adventures of Kit Carson, starring Bill Williams and Don Diamond. And remember, if you're looking for Western toys, especially die-cast American-made cap pistols, um, either for your collection or for your kids or for your grandkids, there's only one place to get them, and that's from Wild West Toys. And you can shop with Wild West Toys online with their shopping cart website at www.toyguntown.com. Thanks again, and we hope to see you back here again to see more episodes of The Adventures of Kit Carson.